And now I guess with that stack death, it's just a jam. Good luck, I guess. Ace fives. Wow. Nine, eight, seven. Uh, without clubs, without diamond, I'm only sometimes betting. Actually, I roll the bet. It's really good to use those suits to navigate there. If I have a club here, I'm pretty much always betting. If I have diamond, it's still better than not having one. Just like blocking his back for flush draws. Um, and now, I mean, the queen is not too bad. But I think this is a check. Check. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty easy call. I mean, you see like that manually scrolled half pot. Like I would say it's like always a 10. I don't know. I could, obviously I can be wrong, but it's like, is this ever a flush? I don't think so. This is like either block betting to get raised by a 10 or it's like going large or something like that. Or it's like, I mean, bluff and then strolling that way. I don't believe it either. So it's like, I don't know, it's 10 and a 10 only. And it's the King 10, what a surprise. It's like really those, this is what I um, meant for like, uh, who was it with the answer? Yeah, blind man's bluff, something like that. Really play those normal tables because there it's way easier to spot those patterns, certain player types, understand different kinds of sizings and so on. This is the biggest recommendation because for everyone on NL100, if you like poker and you enjoy studying it and getting better at it, this is your main job. It's not like, don't try to grind out uh, for a living in, on NL100. I mean, it's like nice to, to get the money in there. And I did that way too much, uh, but just like understanding it more, moving up, getting better is, is way more interesting long-term. Top left, I really have no clue what he is wrapping. So it was block bet by me on the flop. He raises ace queen there. Block bet again on the river. It's like king 10, two, three combos, but he might try to move me off the split. I don't know, uh, I think I call this one off. Four, five, here we go. We talked about different stack death or like sizings. This here is something interesting for me. Like I know King 10 is quite a high, uh, quite a high frequency for bet it. I mean, mixing it in sometimes, that means that hand is good if it can stack off top here, top kicker. But now we have the freaking problem that we are 140 big blinds deep and top pairs are shit. So probably the hand type shifts or a sizing should shift to manipulate uh, SPR and so on. Um, so yeah, it's really, really tough. And this is something where, where I'm, I'm like definitely unsure and I can't like solve it within minutes after the session even. So, uh, I try to evaluate the board and more play my hand and don't really know about the actual structure, uh, to be fair. Here, I think he's just still stronger. The six is better for him as well. There's lots of reasons to attack me. I'm definitely not folding that turn. Now he starts betting. Big sevens, Let's check it's like calling, having a decision on the river. I do not have too many seven X. If he has, has that, he probably stacks me. Uh, the 10 is probably a card I'm just not folding. Sixes and sevens beat me. He shouldn't have much else um, that he checked back and is now value betting. So check, check, that is good. Ace five of diamonds, okay. Uh, Ace king suited, now this is interesting. Very deep, cut off four bet. I think I play without a five bet strategy here. So I have aces, I have kings and so on. And now we have to go from there. It's now always tough to guess villain's range because some people just do not have the bluffs. If he has bluffs though, I'm dominating those and he didn't hit this board. So that's the good part. Maybe some ace five suited. Now this is interesting, right? Again, we have a range where I'm pretty unsure about where I, because of the stack death, need to play differently than the standard charts. And this can lead to some bad mixing bullshit because if I call all ace kings here and fold them on another street and so on, it's just very, very tough. Check, check. So diamonds bust. I have king, queen, king, jack, and so on of diamonds. Sometimes raising that ace king, I think has enough showdown value. So this should be a check. I have six, seven, block. Yeah, this has to be a check. I can check jam something on the turn, so villain should check back quite some flush draws. He's not capped. I think I just have a check fold. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess he should be betting most ace of clubs king, ace of clubs queen on the turn to just keep barreling. And I think he just revered really something. I'm checking some strong hands as well. That's fine. I think against under the gun, this has to be a check. Just thinking about what is the worst hand in my range is something like ace jack suited or a king 10 better. Here I have a backdoor straight. And what about like 
five, six, six, seven, and so on, they hit something. So um, that's pretty decent then. Do I ever have a bet here? I don't think so. I think this is a river bluff. Yeah, this king 10 of clubs has nothing good going for it. I mean, we can, can obviously be fancy and do bullshit like this. This is allowed. I can play kings and aces like that sometimes, but let's play more reasonable today. Next, what was it always? Jacks plus, ace queen suited plus is the moment I will go and sit out next big blind. So randomize when to, when to end the session, always a great idea. Okay, it's 10 here, um, big bet or check raise. This time I rolled, actually I rolled check with the 60. If I go about 50-50, I think I should bet a little more often, but I like check raising here. So villain doesn't have 6-4 off, not 10-4 off, not 10-6 off. That makes, makes my hand very, very, very strong right now. It's very tough for him to have anything better, but this is almost 100% frequency for bet or very high at least, snap it in there. Very aggressive, I guess, good player. I know very aggressive, <laughs> probably good then. So here, uh, I mean, yes, he has a king, but I'm calling with queens. Bullshit, nice. Love to see it. That's the difference between zoom 500 and 200 probably. Uh, here we see aggressive guy. Uh, this here just meaning he's not polarizing to an eight or nothing. This means he has fours, five, sixes, sevens, and so on, all potential, uh, potentially. Um, so I need to float correctly here. Jack nine suited, definitely having nice backdoors going for it, as we can see on that turn card. And now I think, I'm not sure whether we go small only. If he did check raise bigger, we definitely would go small only. But now I give him lots of ace four, ace five suited. I give him fours, five, sixes. I don't want to invite them to call actually. Don't see too many double check raises here, to be honest. I'm protected from the cutoff. I have quite some 8x. Uh, so yeah, that's my reasoning for that. Calling on the cutoff versus a small blind, 3 bet, sometimes a 4 bet, sometimes a call here against half pot. I can fast play if I want, and I will mix it in. So I already rolled the aggress aggressive play uh, and just decided on whether I want to do that or go to um, call only instead. And now I guess with that stack death, it's just a jam. Good luck, I guess. Ace fives. Wow. I mean, his hand is a fine jam against my race. Just having all the equity in the world, just calling to then call down is very ambitious or rather bad. So that were the pocket queens. So actually they made us a stack and I can go and sit out next big blind. Here, all right, that was a pretty decent session. The overall graph. Seems like poker is pretty easy and I'm a red line crusher, which is not true by any means. So we just had a good session, which feels great. Uh, let's just click through this biggest hand here. Jacks versus ace king suited, facing the jam, deciding to run it once, having the perfect feeling here. Here, this hand, he c bets on the big side. So he should have ace 10 jacks as like first hands in that range. So against those, it makes a lot of sense for pocket queens to raise, protect from high cards like king and ace because they could beat us if they hit and protect from high cards if villain has jacks or ace or a 10 because then he won't stack off potentially. So good stuff happening when we raise and it can make sense to give up position for that. This will be a mix and pile. Um, I decided to go with a mix and I think his hand with the second pair, which is more like a two outer to hit trips, with the ace, a three outer to hit a top pair, and the backdoor flush draw, and the backdoor straight draw, we see he has 25% equity. If he ever has full equity, or I ever just get in a flush draw here, him jamming is, is a decent play and is probably the pile recommendation. Um, just calling down on that card, I mean, putting me in a flush draw, I mean, it cannot be bad, but it's like, I, I don't like that. Ace king versus aces, okay. I think ace king suit is actually flat quite often. I think we can still count that as a cooler. That cold four bad pot where I go small, attack his jacks, tens, nines, and so on. And now pretty much going to e sizing, linear direction all in. My deciding my hand is strong enough. Attack his ace queen, his queen jack, his king jack, king ten suited. Jam on a brick run out, very nice. 
So this spot, very, very interesting, a uh, four bad pot where I don't th know regarding stack death, whether King 10 off is still a thing or not. I can see that not being a good hand anymore to four bad. Blockers are still nice, obviously hitting top pair is still nice, but not great to stack off anymore. And well, this board is kind of tough, I guess I'm not four batting nines and eights ever. Queen Jack off, not sure uh, whether I have it. So I rather start by checking a lot and then go from there. And um, yeah, I think Villain played it fine as well calling a cold four here we talked a little about how do we want to continue here right and just the natural thing tells you to call but if we really think about ranges i gave you the hint hey think about the part you want to play against just accept when the money goes in that like we are all in here against ace king and aces it's not my plan to see more bad cards to then get away from it it's not how the solver plays it's like okay but what if villain has tens has jacks his ace queen and so on he has way more hands that actually have that showdown value that I attack with raising than by like calling and then whatever, right? Like hope for him to bluff tens and pot control or I, no. So I, I like the min race here. Start being aggressive myself. Makes it pretty easy to find bluffs as well. If I have like an ace of spades queen or something like that, that can work out with nice blockers. Uh, Ace five diamonds maybe even. And here I decided that he's pro. I have a pure bluff catcher now. We can talk about betting turn. Maybe I should solve that myself, I'm unsure. Um, but here I said like, okay, to find a bluff here, he needs to bluff something like tens with a spade or jacks, not that player type with a note I had or like color I had on him, which is three years old, but still uh, good enough to, to go into one direction. So here's the session graph for just for you. That was it. Just make sure again to, to, to follow uh, Poker Code on the socials to make sure uh, to catch me stream again. Could be anytime soon. Um, yeah, as I said, weather here in Vienna is not good uh, the next days probably. And if I have nothing to do, I always consider putting a session out there and, and share with you guys. So this one went quite well. Uh, I guess we have interesting hands and as well some very interesting hands that I will review maybe now, maybe a little later. And uh, yeah, good luck if you, if you uh, go at the tables yourself and see you in the next time.